everyone and welcome to this tutorial on vectoring in Illustrator. Uh, if you watched my last video it was all about how to vector a pony body and I'm going to continue with that with that in exact same vector in fact but this time we're going to do the eyes. Firstly I'm going to turn off a couple of things like the body fill and the head fill. That way I can see everything. I got a couple of little additions to add here before I do much else. Let's see. I want to change my fill color to this. I'm gonna add her freckles, which are both which are all just ellipses. Okay. Oops. Did not mean to do that one. Sorry, I was recently in Photoshop yesterday and I'm still used to its shortcuts. Ah, curses. Here we go. Alright. Just need to move it over a little bit. Deselect, not enter. Okay. And there we go. I think I just added those to the ear layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new sub layer. I'm just going to name it Freckles. I'm going to click on each one of these and then drag those down into the Freckles layer. They could use a little bit of adjustment, but that's not what I'm, I need to focus on at the moment. So for the eyes, you're always going to be using the Ellipse tool, which is going to be L on your keyboard or this right here. Generally you'll find the rectangle uh, there instead so just click and hold down and then this box will pop up and you can click the, the ellipse tool. Okay now then I like to keep the eyes in their own sub layer and because of how I have to layer these I'm going to put them down here. I'm just going to label this eyes and I'm just going to make one large ellipse. Let me turn off the fill so I can see what I'm doing. Switch to my direct select tool and rotate and move. Now what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to enlarge it just enough so that I get the majority of the eye here. It doesn't have to be perfect just so long as the final product looks good. here okay and this is going to be the eye white what I'm going to do first is I'm going to actually copy this and then I'm going to paste in place which is going to be shift control V and it created a second sub layer so I'm just going to drag out and delete the extra okay. Now this is um, very important because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a clipping mask. And what a clipping mask does is it makes it so that no matter what is going on inside this, I could have a second ellipse that overlaps and comes way out to this side. But only about, as long as that ellipse is inside a clipping mask that is made up of this path, only what's going to be inside this will show up. So firstly, just going to click on both of these and then I can either, let's see, no, it wasn't a button down here, create a clipping mask down here in the object menu or I can hold down command or control 7 and that creates what you see here, a clipping group. Expand the layer so you can see the entire title, or the window. Alright, now I'm going to name this left eye because I try to keep with the pony's perspective. This is going to be the eye white or scalera and I'm going to turn my fill back on. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to enlarge this beyond the size of the clipping mask and as you can see even though the scalera is much larger than the clipping mask you only see what's inside the clipping mask. I'm just going to turn the visibility of that off. Now my next 
layer is going to be the iris here, which is the green color you see. So, so again, just make an ellipse, switch to the right select tool, and modify it until it fits. There we go. I'm going to drag this down into the clipping mask. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing and replicate it. And then I'm just going to control or command 7 and create a second clipping mask. Now the reason I'm doing this is because of the eye highlights or accents. I'm going to name this group iris and this path iris. Now let's see. Now for the gradient. I'm going to need a linear gradient. Let me turn on my gradient tool so I can maneuver this a little bit more directly. The dark color always goes on top, the light color always goes on bottom. Okay. Now that, I'm going to double click on my gradient slider and since I've got the swatches all ready to go, let's see, this is her light gradient color. Oops. Nope. Delete and her dark gradient color. And I want it about here. Okay. And I'm just going to hide that color. And now it's time for the pupil, which is the black portion here. So I switch back to this. And I don't have my basic colors here. So I'm just going to open that very quickly. Okay. Oops. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to switch to my free transform tool from Photoshop for a minute. Oops. Let me turn the color off on this. And it needs to go all the way over here. And I'm just going to drag it down into the clipping mask above the iris layer. And now I can turn that on. Name it pupil. Hide the color, or make it invisible rather. And then I got two more things to do, which are the eye highlight or the eye reflections or shines. Always use the ellipse tool for these. Okay. And this one won't take too much maneuvering. Okay. And deselect. And there we go. So this is going to be my large reflection and small reflection. If you ever do this and share your source files, it helps to have a very good organization and labeling for anyone who might use it later. Okay, the only thing left are the eye accents or highlights right here. I don't like how small this clipping mask is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn these back on and I'm gonna play with them just a little bit more. Sometimes rotation is the key. And you notice I don't actually uh, increase the size of the iris inside the clipping mask like I did with the Scalera. That's because I don't want to accidentally mess up how I have the gradient. I could spend some time fixing it, but it's extra effort that I don't necessarily have to put in. Okay, and let's see. Here is her light highlight. Now, these are always triangles pretty pixelated right here and it's the best that I can do so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it a little bit larger than necessary Okay, Oops. 
and it's up here so I'm going to drag that into this layer and drop it there. It's going to be the light accent and I'm going to set it invisible and then I need my dark accent. As you can see I'm going far beyond the iris which is fine because that's what our clipping mask is for. If you tried to just line up the corner, it would take you quite a while and would not line up properly. Oops. This needs to be above the light accent. Accent is what I'll name it. All right, and then I turn on everything, including square. And let's turn the head fill back on so we can actually see the eye. <laughs> Wrong button. And there you have it. It still needs a little bit of work because that is falling out of this. Oops. No oh, curses. Sometimes selection in this program is a bit of an annoyance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag this down here into the same clipping mask. This one. There we go. As you can see, sometimes you just have to ignore the trace and go with what's required. Because even with some traces, it's just not possible to get a perfect one. Hmm. And her eye doesn't look too bad. So, let me turn this back on and turn off a couple of more things. Alright. And that is essentially how you do this eye as well. So, let's see, what is my time currently? Not bad. Okay, so I have enough time to do the eyebrow and eyelashes very quickly, and then I'll leave it to you to figure out how to do the other eye. Okay, now, first thing is this goes above the actual eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this. Uh, these things get put into the left eye layer. Okay, good. Everything's layered correctly. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to switch to my pen tool and I'm going to switch these colors because I need it to be a stroke. So let's see, this looks like a little bit of bleed so I'm going to start here. And I'm going to go to here. So what's my stroke weight? It looks like it might need to be a 2. Okay, this yellow is sticking out against the color of the stroke, but it's not doing much for anything else. Oops. Ah, I have to change the color up here. Hmm. Let's go with the medium blue. That should stick out against the orange. I'm going to create a, uh, let's see, I only need one more point here, and then I can actually move to the width tool. I'm going to add one, a point here for stroke width, and there we go. So I've switched to the width tool, and now I have to taper this stroke. So let's set that to zero. Oops, I just did the whole thing. Command click and then double click zero. Hmm. Okay, that's still two. This has gotten a little bit too thick. So I'm going to change it down here. Hmm. Just add one width point up here in the middle to thin it up a little bit. Okay, and then I need to taper this stroke as well. So there we go. And that is how an you create the first bit of the eyelash. All right, now we just got these two things. I'm going to name this eyelid. So I'm just going to layer them above that. In this case, set it to two. And actually, I think there is a stroke profile for this. Yes. 
that's a little bit too skinny. Okay, so let's see. That looks better. Alright, now I've got one more to do. I'm just going to create another path. Take it to three points and then use this width profile. Let's turn on the head fill and the eye. Okay, so it's not quite lined up. So, it's easy enough to fix. What I'll do is I'll just take this and this, just adjust it slightly. And there you go. That is how you create a pony eye. It takes a little bit of practice to get them perfectly right. Um, generally, no one ever gets them perfectly right, so don't feel discouraged if you don't get it exactly like you see in the picture. Uh, the next one will more than likely be either cutie marks or mains. Uh, you'll find out when I have them posted. Oh, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have a question, pop me one in the comments or uh, post me or send me a note on DeviantArt. Thanks for watching and have a good night.